Hey guys, good morning at this crazy hour. Like I said, uh, stream times are moving forward again late until we uh, reset the cycle. I just uh, had uh, lunch, or is it dinner, or breakfast? It's food, does matter, right? And uh, we are about to start another uh, uh, long stream, which means start late, we end late. And the time doesn't matter when you start, when you end. It's like some people will just miss the stream. That's how it is. Hey guys, so uh, we finished the Vampire Coast, short campaign victory, turn 122, and we started the Battle Legion. I've uh, been playing for 13 turns. So far it's been rough, but let's see what happens. But this is the part 2 of the Battle Legion, the new Vampire Count, the new Undead Faction. They're no longer the Vampire Counts, they're now classified as the Undead group of, uh, of factions. What they eat? Uh, some um, healthy food, uh, healthy mix of vegetables cooked, and some chicken. Yoo Let's go. Well, uh, like in, you have to uh, understand that uh, we're always moving forward. We never are staying in the same schedule. Because I have things like to do, like, uh, you know, go to the doctor, like today, and messes up my uh, my whole sleep pattern, you know, it's against the ni uh, night life. So I come home and I can't sleep, and then I'm up until like 1 p.m. instead of sleeping. You know, I can't just uh, stay up for, uh, for 24 hours or 6 hours. I'm, uh, I'm getting old. I'm getting old, guys. Gone are the days of uh, uh, World of Warcraft, Lineage 2, the early Diablo 3 days, Pet of Exile, where I could uh, play for 20 hours straight and then, you know, sleep for 8, have 28 hour days. Now I need, I need, uh, I can be up for like... 13, 14 hours, and then uh, chill before sleep. Alex, thank you for the support. Hey guys, I'm I'm uh, 30 years old now, M getting that uh, that midlife. Uh, we'll see, Cookies, in five years. But don't you worry guys, uh, uh, this is the eternal stream, uh, we are planned uh, uh, online every day, and uh, if it's, you know, early or the late or very early in the day, we are still uh, live. If you missed it, you can check the uh, Twitch VODs or YouTube. On YouTube, all the, all the campaigns are there oh for a while God. now. On you playlist, organized, so you can watch from start to end. Hey Flair! Hey, Flap here is also an old man. You see, he's 28, been 28 years here. Okay, where were we? So, uh, this is the Battle Legion, uh, the new undead faction led by uh, Heinrich Kamler. They start here at the Blackstone Post, in the center of things. We do have some uh, weak uh, uh, neighbors on this side here. And uh, potentially some nasty stuff on the other side. I feel like uh, we're gonna get into mess with the Empire. Right now we've been pretty much been in this area here, uh, fighting Bretonia and the rebellions. This area is not uh, uh, highly corrupted, and uh, we're gonna have rebellions. When you uh, add the corruption penalty to the uh, dif difficulty penalty and the tax, you end up with minus eight, minus six, minus four. It's a really serious corruption. The undead have an easier time managing uh, public order as long as the corruption uh, is there. So even on legendary, uh, the undead can manage corruption uh, uh, fine. It's just all about the corruption. They did change the technologies. Uh, these technologies are cheaper to research. Uh, these two are almost the same. 
and these are uh, more expensive technologies here. You can still, uh, you know, start with stuff like this. Maybe if you play the the uh, the one car signs or the vampire counts. But uh, I feel like as uh, the Battle Legion, as the as Heinrich Camel faction, uh, getting the defiler of the ancient battles is a must. The uh, we have cheaper necromancers, must necromancers, and uh, so we can uh, have a, a big skeleton army, really really cheap. And the skeletons, once they get some bonuses like this, and weapon strength, and armor, and you can have like a like a like a spare necromancer uh, focusing on the unliving host, and the skeleton warriors and skeleton spearmen uh, uh, then solid, solid for their cost, and when they are uh, almost free or free, we will have to see that. Uh, it's really good. We are missing uh, one uh, blood kiss. Uh, hey Kozirek, yeah, sure, if you get the slots, yeah. Why not? Yeah, so, uh, we have a Bretonian army here. We already defeated Luin, uh, before, so this we got one blood kiss for him. One blood kiss was from the, uh, from the Artois. I had uh, a necromancer cookies around, but he failed to kiss the damsel. Got rebuked and uh, he got wounded. The lady would you try to kiss a girl, it. and then you send, get sent to a hospital. That's why you stay away from the girls, guys. Stay away from the girls. They will serve. Yeah. You dare. Tempting. We will uh, deal about uh, deal with these rebels first. We do have enough bodies here. Darkness comes. Find me, Charnel Pits. Uh, well, uh, there is uh, no corruption, uh, Goldeneye. There is no tier 2. There is no walls. Uh, this is impossible to hold. The rebels uh, will de de delete us. What happens uh, in th this situation? Even if you have tier 1 walls, or tier 2 walls, what happens is uh, the rebels attack, you win, and then the rebels attack again before you replenish. So it's n not possible to hold. Uh, high negative public order, uh, even the rebellions can overwhelm you. This is too early uh, to, to defend against the rebels. It's turn 13, and uh, we have to save our treasury for tier 3 here. The most important thing about the undead, the most important thing is unlocking your grave guard. The grave guard is the unit you want to focus early game. So you need the ancient armory, it's a tier 3 unit. Unlocked by tier 2 uh, cemetery. So this is the unit you want above anything else. And this is gonna give you a reliable army that actually deals damage early game. So uh, we we'll bring everything we can to get this tier 3 here. Uh, Arto and Marienburg are uh, uh, just for some money. And uh, the rebels will probably take it. If not the rebels, somebody else. Uh, the corruption here is a problem. Because uh, uh, without... Uh, this technology here, and without this technology here, and maybe one osmosis building, uh, it's not possible to stabilize. As you're invading other lands, and uh, the vampires need corruption for that. If there is no corruption, rebellions non stop due to uh, public order penalties. And uh, especially early in the game when you don't have the buildings, the tier 3, tier 4. Get uh, the walls for security. The tier 3 walls can handle rebellions even if they come non stop. Uh, repression building for public order and the Belfire building for the osmosis corruption. So, uh, right now it's just uh, Vecca mauling rebels and uh, fighting Bretonia as we unlock the defiled of the ancient barrows. Another reminder, guys uh, Marienburg is not as great as people think. The port gives a lot of money, but it's a two region uh, province. Takes a lot, a while to grow, and the real money comes on tier five. On tier five, which makes uh, nearly every other province in the area better than the uh, wasteland, especially for the emperor like Wisland. So it's not as great as you know people think. You know, I don't know where this mentality comes from, but you know, it's like they they are the bull and they see red when they somebody mentions Marienburg. This city uh, only becomes great on tier five. 
on uh, on the uh, before it's just like a, any any other province in the game it's two regions so it even grows slower what gives the uh, st uh, max powerful provinces is three uh, more regions three and four regions like Reichland Reichland is a very powerful province more regions this this is almost like the every other uh, Bretonian province two regions and uh, one is really exposed and there is Norsk in DC as well Well, they added a uh, new region here. Albion is the port facing uh, the north. It's a new province. Okay. After the uh, the one of Heimlings. Yeah, the Blackstone Post is the new capital. It has eight slots and has a unique building, the landmark. Well, it's a it's a single region province, so it should be eight slot or ten slot. So it's a nice uh, region here for Norska. Nice province for Norska. By the comet. Once you uh, forfeit this area, uh, this is easier to hold. Just need to get to that point, tier 3. Well, with this faction, I think this is critical. This faction, uh, this one is critical. With uh, with one Karstens or the Vampire Counts, it doesn't really matter. They are powerful as it is. So those factions have a really powerful start, so you can't really mess that up. And you have done, there is no even any struggle there. Doesn't matter which lord you start, which faction you start, this area is just uh, uh, just very powerful. So uh, you can immediately go for uh, city income and corruption with the growth. This faction, uh, this faction will, uh, can struggle easy, I think. So this one is critical. I mean, uh, cheap necromancers, cheaper necromancers, necromancers are cheap as well. Uh, the Skeleton Spearmen are solid if they're free. And you can get like a, ne like a Necromancer Hilo, Hero with uh, with other stuff as well. So you can recruit the rank 4 uh, Skeleton Units. This definitely has this flavor where you want to go free units. Free Skeletons. Let us make doom. We got Camel on the horse. The only Camel's got old and he's need a horse, he's not immortal yet. Blackstone Post was uh, Karak Ziflin region. Uh, orcs are in the Grung Zint, north. How do you effectively fight against uh, Tomb Kings as uh, Tomb Kings in uh, early game? Well, uh, you need a couple of better units than the regular Skeleton Spearmen and Warriors, plus you need the uh, battle skills. The battle skill for infantry is critical early. And uh, you might even have a Lich Priest. But you'll give a couple of units that uh, they will not be able to handle like the Chariots. The armies are very similar, but uh, there's gonna be a, a difference in a couple of different units. The chariots uh, murder uh, the uh, the early game early game Tomb Kings. So your most important tier one building is the chariots. It's also one of your cheapest, so uh, get the chariots. If you struggle, get the chariot king and get extra chariots. A uh, single chariot charge into the back and uh, kill half the unit. We're gonna have to fight the uh, Bretonian army after this as well. Zombies uh, uh, should go first here. The skeleton warriors uh, have two more weapons, uh, weapon damage, and uh, they also have four more uh, attack at a cost of eight melee defense. But the skeleton spearmen lost something large. They also do have uh, two more charge. 
The, get, the difference between these two is uh, uh, not really that big. But this one is tier 2. And I think that it was supposed to be tier 1. As, uh, since the patch. So uh, you definitely want Skeleton Spearmen over the Skeleton Warriors. And you want both over the Zombies. Even if the Zombies are free, there's really no point using Zombies. Absolutely no point using Zombies if you can get uh, the Skeletons. And if you can get Skeleton Spearmen, there is no point using uh, Skeleton Warriors. Skeleton Warriors will get wrecked by anything large, while the Skeleton Spearmen uh, uh, will resist. Legendary Ace Zombies was beating my Skeleton Warriors earlier. Oh man, you know, I, I don't want to comment this. The Skeleton Zombies have no armor, so I find it hard to believe. I am back. Skeletons have 20 armor, this makes them uh, win by default. Maybe uh, uh, they were... Uh, they were there were other factors, uh, Flerp, but that's just not possible. Uh, the skeletons are better by default because uh, uh, they have armor and much higher uh, skills, like the attack and defense. But it's not a, another situation where uh, ever where the zombies better than a skeleton in a battle. I have never seen zombie win against the skeletons. I mean, just look at this. This is a regular skeleton warriors. It's regular uh, zombies. The zombies have extra uh, 300 health, which means nothing. Uh, skeletons have extra 20 armor, 8 speed, 13 uh, attack, 16 defense, 8 damage, and 3 charge. The attack, defense, and armor alone makes zombies lose by default. Difference between a 0 and 20 armor is huge. When your opponent has only 18 weapon strength. Uh, we played Arkhan. There is a campaign on uh, YouTube if you missed it. Zombies are uh, pretty much a unit to tire your enemy, nothing else. They do get some better stats with uh, uh, technology and battle skills, but the only the only thing they can do in battle is just tire your enemy. But still, Booker, uh, uh, it's 20 armor and a huge difference in attack and defense. Just think about it. 20 armor, 18 weapon strength. 8 attack, 27 defense. It's like pitting all boys against Iron Breakers. Yep, yeah. the moment you get a Grave Guard, uh, the massacres begin. That's a good qu the question. Uh, uh, who, what, 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 did this, what was this zombie unit you were fighting, Flare? Was it just uh, rebels or the AI? Because uh, if you add the ravenous dead to the mix, if the AI has legendary zombies with the ravenous dead in the mix with the early tech against your basic skeleton warriors, now that would uh, be interesting to see what would happen. Uh, not budgie, because it's base uh, base stats. I played uh, I played a uh, vampire a lot over the undead, and trust me, you know the early game is uh, uh, you get to see these fights, and I've never seen uh, uh, the air zombies uh, win against the skeletons. The air zombies are just there to uh, uh, pin you down. Uh, head Tom Gap, uh, hold space on the campaign map and you'll have uh, overlay like similar like this bell and then you lock uh, the floating uh, the floating names oh 
What I think of uh, using zombies to pin so you can uh, cast missile dead? Well, uh, you should use skeleton spin him or the grave guard in a in a line and pin the enemy like this. The zombies have no formation. So create a line of uh, like this, and make sure the enemy uh, make sure to you not break the line. Find the even ground and uh, always create a situation for win of death. You can uh, fight every battle like that. So, uh, Grave Guard is preferable, the Grave Guard shield. Guys, uh, uh, this, this zombie uh, discussion is like, uh, don't be dead guy, that's multiplayer stuff. That's multiplayer stuff. They don't even affect diplomacy anymore. Zombies have, uh, have do nothing really in a single player. Why use zombies when you can use skeletons? That is uh, uh, like this thing that don't exist in single player. The moment you get extra skeletons, the zombies, uh, you know, uh, just uh, you ignore zombies. You, the only reason you're gonna use zombies is because you don't have anything else at the time. Extra bodies to die. It's a, it's a difference in, in cost between these units, and this is not multiplayer, so uh, the zombies have no place in campaign when you have skeletons. Well, I don't think they care much about that. Uh, it doesn't work anymore, Booker. I, I tried it. Have you seen uh, how much units we have? The power of the strength is not affected at all. I just said it, Booker. It doesn't work anymore. Don't you see how many units we have? And we are one, over 100. The only reason we use zombies right now is because uh, uh, Ray is dead. I would not recruit zombies otherwise. We need, uh, we need bodies. We need bodies so uh, we have a uh, number in battle. Because uh, there is not, uh, not that many skeletons in Ray's dead right now. Yeah, I guess you could uh, uh, create uh, the big battlefields by uh, expanding zombies. That's viable tactics. But really, you're gonna rely on race dead. That's some uh, some serious level roleplay. Uh, the race dead uh, uh, is just convenient. It's not needed at all as the game progresses. It's just convenient. There are gonna be battlefields uh, on the on in your provinces, no matter what. No matter what. And dead uh, uh, should be able to get bloated, yeah. Mighty champion. The grave guard uh, holds the line. You need a specific army to have a uh, race in the line. Cane race is a more of a flanking unit. They do not have attack, and uh, they don't have the toughness of the uh, Grave Guard. Not the not reliable toughness, at least. The fact that the Grave Guard has uh, better battle skills and uh, technologies makes uh, uh, makes the Grave Guard better uh, by default. If the Ken Reds had attack uh, a battle skill similar to the Sirens or the Graveguard, uh, the Ken the Ken Reds, uh, 
if the can raids had it, that would be more viable. They made really bad battle skills for the can raids. 